Last week, I spoke about the article that had come out in the Toronto Star, Ontarian facing possibly a historic $90 million claim. Now, I also did a radio show where we did discuss the reasons why this might happen and why builders are facing this particular dilemma today. The thing is, along with builders, who actually really cannot feel so bad for, it's people like you and me who have bought pre-construction properties and are also going to face issues. We are all in the same boat. Because of the Government of Canada's overspending during the pandemic, people overspending during the pandemic, then the rise in the interest rates and the rise in our daily day-to-day -day expenses. Just like us, builders also could not keep up with their own construction expenses and delayed material issues. It became so bad that many well-known builders decided to give up and today we are all in this situation where people are left drained of their savings and builders going into receivership. Today's video is to educate you on receivership. It's very different from bankruptcy. If you are in the pool of people who have given their money to the builders and are just waiting, watch to the end. You know exactly to what extent you can be protected. But first, you know the drill. Make sure to hit like, share, subscribe, and that bell icon. It gets me motivated to keep you up to date with everything real estate. Hi and hello and thank you so much for tuning in and if you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Preeti Rao and I am both a real estate and a mortgage broker for close to 20 years. Now, there's always been a confusion over the terms bankruptcy and receivership when it comes to builders in particular because they can technically apply for either or and if receivership fails, it will eventually lead to bankruptcy and this is quite common but the fundamental differences are fairly straightforward. So let's start with what is a receivership? Basically, it's a court appointed tool that can assist creditors in recovering funds that are in default and can help troubled companies avoid bankruptcy. Having a receivership in place makes it easier for the lender to obtain the funds that are owed to them if the borrower defaults on a loan. A receivership could also arise as a result of shareholders' disputes over completing a project or liquidating assets or even selling the business, which is exactly what happened in the case of Van Dyke Properties, you know, the ones for Shelburne and Dundalk. Now, in general, a receivership is a process that is put in place to protect a company. A period of receivership may be thought of like a protective umbrella for a troubled company. During this time, a receiver or a trustee steps in, manages the entire company, its assets, all its financial obligations and operating decisions. While the receivership is operative, the company's principles or owners remain in place as material contributors, but their authority is extremely limited. Receiverships are also used by companies that are in financial distress, like most of our builders today, and can be used as part of a company's restructuring process. See, a receivership itself is not a legal process, but it is usually invoked during a legal proceeding. Either the lender or a court of law appoints a receiver to act as a trustee for a business and they must be an independent party with no prior business relationship to either the borrower or the lender. They can never act for the benefit of one party to a detriment of another. Now on the other hand, we have bankruptcy. Bankruptcy is an action that's usually taken to protect the debtor or the borrower from collection actions by the creditor or the lender. Bankruptcy courts and rulings are primarily aimed in shielding the borrower, not the lender. Completely the opposite. A company may file for a Chapter 11 bankruptcy when it wants to solve its financial problems while maintaining business operations. On the other hand, when a company files for a Chapter 7 bankruptcy, it's generally for the purpose of liquidating and closing the business. There are other forms of bankruptcy, but these two are the main common ones used by all businesses. Now, when a company files for bankruptcy, it basically stops operating and all its assets are put up for sale by the court-appointed trustee. And once all the assets are sold, the proceeds are divided in order of the seniority of the debt. Now, knowing the difference between bankruptcy and receivership is great. But when it comes to you, the consumer, 
which option is the lesser of the two evils so you stand a small chance of getting your funds back or getting the property as promised it's receivership because in that scenario there is a very minute chance that the project can be sold to another builder who will then take charge and honor the original commitment or the original agreement now all of this is great but the question is where do you stand when do you get your money back in the event of a bankruptcy or in the event that the receivership fails the only time you can get your any form of your deposit back is if you go to tarian and that's where they fit in all the way at the end they come in last they come in when you make your claims once you get that notice and you're like okay fine i want some i want my money back they're not going to give you everything that you've given the builder if your purchase price is 600000 and a freehold property mind you okay the maximum that you can get back is $60000 if it's over 600,000 you get a max of 10% up to $100,000 that's it so if you've given $140,000 and your purchase price is let's say 700 and something you're only going to get $70,000 that's 10% of 700,000 if your purchase price is 1.2 million you will get up to maybe $100,000 and that's it so that's how it's broken down when it comes to freehold properties for condominiums unfortunately the maximum is only $20,000 so before getting into the precon do your homework and say a small little prayer that the builder is good at managing their funds so Tell me what you think, and if you still don't know who I am, just go check my rating on Google and read my client reviews. Till then, you take care. And if you found value or like this video and would like to see more content, click on the boxes on the screen. Once again, my name is Preeti Rao. My contact information is in the description box below. Make sure to hit like, share, subscribe, and the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching, and don't forget to call me because I hold the key that opens the door to your dream home.